Welcome to our review on the mole. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to understand a few key terms. So the first one that we're going to look at is the actual word mole. Now in chemistry when we talk about the mole we're not talking about a small furry animal that's digging underground. What we're actually talking about is the amount of a substance that contains the same number of entities and by an entity we're referring to an atom, an ion or molecule as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. So we've got that reference point of our carbon 12 and basically however many atoms there are in 12 grams of carbon 12 then one mole of another substance has exactly the same number of those entities. It has the units mole, M-O-L, and then when we're writing it that's the unit we will include after the numbers. The next term we need to understand is Avogadro constant. Now quite simply this is our number which is telling us the number of entities in one mole that is the same as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. So that's 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 that is the Avogadro constant that's the number we would use. So if you got a question that asked you how many entities there were in six moles of a particular chemical then all you need to do is 6, which is obviously your amount in moles, times by the Avogadro constant, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and that will give us our answer. So this is just to give you an idea of the kind of question we may see. You could get something as simple as asking you how many atoms of aluminium are there in 2.54 moles. So obviously the atoms are the entities. So all it's asking us to do here is work out the number of entities of aluminium in 2.54 moles of it. So we're going to take the 2.54, which is our amount. We multiply that by the Avogadro constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. Plug that into your calculator and then you will get the answer 1.52908 times 10 to the power 24. Now, remember that when we're talking about writing these answers in standard form, then if the question gives it to you in standard form, they're going to be expecting the answer in standard form as well. So make sure that you do know, number one, how to use your calculator properly before the exam in order to use standard form on there. And secondly, how to write it as your answer correctly. The only other bit to look out for is that if in the question it says give your answer to three significant figures, then make sure you do that because that actual correct number of significant, significant figures in your answer will be worth a mark to you as well. The last thing we need to look at in terms of our mole here is how to calculate the molar mass. Now, anytime we're talking about the molar mass, it's quite simply the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. Now, the good thing is that it is the substance's relative atomic or relative formula mass. The units, however, are different. So the units for the molar mass are in grams per mole. So the kind of question we could get is what is the molar mass of sucrose? And you can see its formula there, C12H22O11. Now, if you look at the periodic table that you're given in the exam, you'll be able to find the atomic masses of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So carbons is 12, hydrogen's one, and oxygen is 16. Then what we need to do is obviously multiply the atomic mass by the number of each atom there are. So 12 times 12 for our carbon and add that onto our 22 times one for hydrogen and then add on our oxygen 11 times 16. And that then gives us a total of 342. And don't forget to include the units of grams per mole. 